It's the middle of the night in the late 1800s in northern Ohio. Gore Orphanage sits among the forested area just south of a small town named Vermilion, alone and seemingly peaceful. Rumors have swirled about abuse of the children in the orphanage by the owner, Mr. Gore, but nothing's been proven. Suddenly, the quiet is broken by the sound of screams. A man bursts through the front door of the orphanage and runs down the road toward town. Behind him, flames quickly engulf the building, trapping the children inside. By the time help arrives, it's too late. The number of children lost in the blaze is unknown because old man Gore never kept records and never cared much for the kids in his charge. No one knows for sure who started the fire, but many suspect it was started by one of the children, either accidentally or purposefully in an attempt to free themselves of the daily torture they endured. But is there any truth to the legend? Did an orphanage burn down, killing possibly dozens of children? Or is there more to this tale? Let's find out in this episode of Ohio Legends and Tales. Welcome back to the Least Professional channel on YouTube, and welcome to Ohio Legends and Tales. Today we're looking at the tale of Gore Orphanage. Sitting on the shores of Lake Erie, there's a small town known as Vermilion, Ohio. Just south of Vermilion, there's a road that winds its way through the forest and farmlands and over the Vermilion River, known as Gore Orphanage Road. No one really knows for sure where the road got its name, but one thing that is known is that there once existed an orphanage with a very sad tale. The truth behind the legend, though, makes this one of the saddest legends we've ever covered. Our story starts in 1902, when Johann Sprunger and his wife Katharina moved to the Vermilion area. Johann and Katharina had moved from Bern, Indiana, where they'd been caretakers of the Light of Hope Orphanage. The couple had four children, three sons, all of whom passed away at a young age, and a daughter, Hilagonda, who also died young on July 7, 1887, at the age of six. The Sprunger family had migrated to the U.S. from Switzerland in 1854, and following the loss of their children, Johann and Katharina would spend some time in Tennessee before moving back to Switzerland for a short while, where Johann would be ordained as a minister and learn about the Mennonite Deaconess Movement. The couple would bring this movement back with them to Bern, where they would start their own Deaconess Movement. They would train a small group of women in Bern to be deaconesses sending them to Chicago to continue their work and spread the gospel. Through this movement, the Light of Hope Orphanage will be founded in Bern, with the first children being admitted on April 1st, 1893. In addition to the orphanage, there was also hospitals that the group ran in Chicago, Detroit, and Cleveland. The hospital in Cleveland caught fire in 1895, with one of the deaconesses perishing in the blaze in an attempt to save patients. In April of 1899, one of the buildings at the Light of Hope Orphanage caught fire, and three of the girls in the home would not survive. Following this tragedy, the Light of Hope Orphanage would move to Vermilion, Ohio, where Johann had purchased property formerly owned by Joseph Swift. The property had four sets of farm buildings on 543 acres, as well as a larger mansion where the Swift family had resided. Johann would utilize the farm buildings and attempt to create a self-sustaining community within the confines of the orphanage grounds. In 1909, an investigation was launched against the Light of Hope Orphanage, based on allegations from W.B. Gatz, who had been told of terrible conditions in the orphanage by his grandchildren who resided there. The testimony included Johann Sprunger taking the stand in court to talk about feeding the children a cow that had died from overfeeding, and two of the boys who lived there testifying that they were routinely beaten and fed filthy food. One of the testimonies from the trial read as follows. I have been beaten with a strap in the hands of hired men or the preacher, and the food we had to eat was often spoiled. On Mr. Sprunger's birthday, we were fed a chicken 
which had a large sore on its back, but we had to eat it or go hungry. The rooms were full of bed bugs, and the boys were covered with lice. They got rid of the lice after a while, but not the bed bugs, and rats ran over our beds, and two of the boys were bitten by them. The rooms were cold, as the sitting room used by the boys was neither plastered or sealed, and the window lights were sometimes out during the winter. Only one bathtub was provided for our monthly baths, and no soap or towels were furnished, and we had to dry our bodies with our dirty underclothes, the water in the tub being changed but once for 25 or 30 boys. This was just one of many testimonies that came out during the trial, including allegations of forcing the children to eat spoiled meat and an underground railroad that had sprung up to help the children escape the orphanage. This trial was a civil case, not criminal, as there weren't really any regulations around orphanages in Ohio at the time. Following the trial, another investigation was conducted by the Cleveland Humane Society when it was learned that three children were placed in the Light of Hope Orphanage that were not supposed to be placed there. It appears that the trial and subsequent investigations resulted in improved conditions at the orphanage, but the conditions may have been greatly exaggerated in the first place. There was at least one death of a child on the property in 1910. It was recorded in the El Arriba Republican on February 10, 1910. The story in the paper reads as follows. Collision with a wagon while coasting cost the life of Charles Luhead, 14, and dangerously injured Paul Berger, 12, on Saturday afternoon. Both were inmates of the Light of Hope Orphanage at Birmingham, six miles west of here. Sixty-five other inmates out for pleasure looked on aghast as the fatal accident occurred. Luhead's head struck the wagon hub and death was instantaneous. Young Berger, his companion, struck the wheel with a terrific thump. His entire body is a mass of bruises. Dr. Bess of Birmingham stated Tuesday that the boy will recover. He was not taken to a hospital and is at present housed at the orphanage. Mrs. Millie Luhead of Reinersburg, Pennsylvania took charge of the dead boy's funeral this afternoon. The hundred inmates of the orphanage paid tribute in a body. Other than that report, there was nothing else I could find relating to deaths at the Light of Hope Orphanage. Johann Sprunger would pass away in 1911, and the orphanage itself would change hands after that, before closing for good in 1916, following years of financial trouble. Now, if the allegations of what was going on prior to the investigations in 1909 are true, then I imagine it was a terrible time for the children that the newspapers deemed inmates. But there was never a fire on the grounds that killed anyone. I think some of the legend may have been built on the framework of the fire from the Prior Light of Hope Orphanage in Burn, Indiana. But there may also be more to it. The next Ohio Legends and Tales episode is going to focus on something that I think may have been blended into this tale. And it's one that brought me to tears when I was researching it. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like to help encourage YouTube to push it out to more people and share it with everyone you know. Drop a comment below letting me know what you thought of the story and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future Ohio Legends and Tales videos. I'll drop a Legends and Tales playlist right up here in case you've missed any of the previous episodes, so check that out if you want to see more. I want to thank you all for watching, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.